In this lesson, we will consider the criminal justice process in effect within the United Kingdom. Now, before we go on to the subject matter proper, we have to look at several models or theories in terms of or in relation to the criminal justice processes in effect all around the world. Now, these don't necessarily relate to a complete or exhaustive list of models that have been employed, but just to give you an idea of the various theories that I employed in order to process criminals through a criminal justice process of respective countries. Now, the first model, the crime control model, is in fact a very obvious notion. Why I say this is because the primary objective of a crime control model is to limit the liberties of offenders. So the focus thereof is to obtain a conviction. However, it must be noted that regardless of this objective and how noble it might be, there are miscarriages of justice that could occur since the system is catered towards obtaining this conviction that I mentioned earlier all stakeholders or the parties involved in the criminal justice process has a mindset of convicting an offender. Mm -hmm. Therefore, there might be occasions in which miscarriages of justice occurs. So as an overview, the crime control model is in fact a mechanism by which there is control of crime on the one hand as well as punishment of the offender in terms of the individual. Next, we have the medical model in which the focus is in fact quite the opposite of the crime control model, as in it focuses on rehabilitating the offender. So attempts to identify the reason behind the crime is given more weight than actually obtaining a conviction. So it's concerned with the behavior of the criminal or the offender. Rehabilitation over that of conviction and punishment. Now, while both these models are concerned with the offender himself, the third model, which is the restorative justice model, focuses on the victim. It's a victim-centric model. Therefore, the focus is getting the offender to recognize his or her responsibility, much like the second model we discussed earlier in terms of the medical model, but also rectify the wrong that has been committed to the victim, so to make amends. The fourth model is the bureaucratic model, and this in turn focuses neither on the offender or the victim, but the system itself, the process, and in terms of the process, to make it as efficient as possible in order to get the offenders through in a logical, sequential, and a proper manner. So it's the efficiency of the criminal justice system in that particular country within that jurisdiction, and it's not concerned with the individual rights. Now, much like the first model, which is the crime control model, where the system itself is focused heavily on punishing the offender, even within the bureaucratic model, there can be miscarriages of justice that occurs. We arrive once again at the spotlight being on the offender in the fifth model we discuss, as in the status passage model, where punishment comes in the form of degradation and shaming of the offender, and creating an infrastructure so as to enable uh, others, enable the victim, as well as uh, members of the society to identify this person as an offender, so that even in the event that he comes out of prison or he comes out of his conviction, he is shamed and degraded. The sixth model, the power model, is based on the class structure and maintaining a particular social class order. Now, it must be noted that these models, as I mentioned earlier, are not implemented in its entirety. It's not a literal implementation. These are just aspects of criminal justice processes that can be seen. There might be instances where there is a mixture or a, or a combination, an amalgamation of each of these characteristics. The final model that we'll discuss is focused heavily on profiling the criminal. So it differentiates the suspect population based on its social exclusions. Now, having considered all of these models or theories, it's important to note that no matter what model uh, a particular country or a jurisdiction abides by or how amalgamated or connected or mixed it might be, the objectives will definitely remain the same and they can be summarized into three main points. Firstly, any criminal justice process is there to punish wrongdoers. It is also there to protect individual liberties 
and most importantly it is a mechanism by which state tries to prevent crime now that we have had a look at the various objectives and prior to that the models or theories applicable in various jurisdictions let's focus more on the uk jurisdiction or the uk's criminal justice process and determine how the prosecution process takes place at the very outset a crime will be recorded by the police there will be a victim that makes a complaint or in some manner or form the police will record the particular crime from that point onwards the police will arrest the suspect at this juncture there will be either no action taken he or she will be charged or there'll be depending on the type of crime involved a formal caution or an informal warning of some sort if however the police decides to charge this particular offender this particular individual then it is passed on to the cps or the crown prosecution service who receives the papers from the police which is pretty much a brief for prosecution at this point once again there is another check much like the earlier one that is made by the cps now which is the crown prosecution service where it either decides to discontinue because there is no case to be heard or it proceeds with the charge at this point the case is forwarded to the magistrate's court for hearing and at this juncture at the magistrate's court based on a prima facie case to be heard it's either an indi- indictable only offence in which case it's directly forwarded to the crown court for a trial or it's a trial either bay or summary offence where it is a trial either way either the magistrate decides on the jurisdiction or the defendant elects for a trial now the beauty of this is when you consider it as a trial either way regardless of the defendant's decision it will anyway proceed to the crown court for trial if the charge or if the accusation is not as serious as it once was or as it was considered earlier then there'll be a summary trial at the magistrate's court itself rather than being forwarded to the crown court for trial